Good morning, everybody. Just stepping out of my shipping container here. Um, this is uh, basically an average morning here at Awesome Possum. Beautiful sunny day in Texas. Uh, I'm over here working on my bus. As you can see, I just did a two foot roof raise. So I'm out here skinning it up. This is some transitional stuff I did in the back. We're still working on it, but this is what I'm doing today. Got my scaffolding up and I'm popping rivets and putting in sheet metal. This is the shop over here. Looks like Phil is working on a Winnebago. I think he's working on these slide outs. So this is the kind of stuff that goes on around here. Scott's over here working on a van build. Ooh, look at that. He just painted up this awesome countertop. You're gonna do butcher block on this? Yep, butcher block on the top and then yeah. just, uh, stain natural butcher block to match the pillar of the ceiling. Yeah. Almost done. Very Final cool. Touches. And this is just a sneak peek. I mean, there's so many other sites. You can see all kinds of people camping all over the place. It's cool sweat. It looks like that nice spot by the pond just opened up. John over here is doing a roof raise. There's way more scenic spots down there where people like uh, more of a primitive setup. These are the vibes here. Super chill, community, lots of good people. Everybody's always helping each other out. Come check it out. As you can see, I've got the door pulled out here. You might notice some yellow lines here and that's where the original owner left the reflective tape on before he painted which is bad. Here I'm gonna fill in these windows also with some sheet metal and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Oh, by the way, this is the tool that I use to pull off all of that sticky stuff. Mm. What I'm doing over here is I've got the uh, door off the frame and uh, it's out here, off the hinges I should say. And um, I'm going to try and salvage some of this thinner sheet metal from the inside of the bus. Unfortunately, I don't have a piece long enough to do one solid piece because there are some holes for where there's this little Harbor Freight nibbler after doing some measurements. And, uh, that's going to patch these holes in here up and then we'll be able to spray foam them from the inside to make it nice and um, weather secure. Here I'm cutting out the blanks for the windows. We also did this in the doorway in order to fill it. Do you want to try the nipple in the mouth? No. Got gloves? You want to get this? So once our shapes were cut out, we applied some construction adhesive. This is made by Loctite, and I made sure to get something that's rated for metal to bond metal. Um, we decided to go this route instead of rivets because it would have taken too many rivets to accomplish this task, and we were hoping for a cleaner look this way. The reason that we're covering up the windows is because we want to block out light back here because this is going to be our bedroom area and we want to have security because this door is going to access our garage. As you can see here, we've used these magnets to sort of clamp and adhere it while it cured. And this is the shot of what it looks like when it's all finished. After the adhesive cured, then I added this black stuff here, which is the NP1, which is gonna act as like a sealant against water. Let's take a look at what it looks like from the inside as well. As you can see, nice and sealed up. And uh, this looks real clean, real easy to do. The next step before I could finish skinning the outside was to weld in our cross bracing. 
So I cut some one inch square tubular steel into angles and began to weld them up. Here's a closer look at the angled bracing. As you can see, after welding it, we also painted it. We used a spray paint version of the Rust-Oleum Rusty Primer that we used in the previous video. That made it very easy to paint the inside of these hat channels as well as the bracing. So now the next step is to prep for sheet metal. In preparation for riveting, I'm cleaning all of the rivet holes with a wire brush to deburr them and make sure they're nice and smooth. After cleaning the outside of the rivet holes, I've gone in here with a pry bar and a mallet, and I've just kind of pulled the metal out in order to create a gap for where that sheet metal can slide into place. This is an important step because the metal will get dimpled and create little pockets that will stop it. After this, we had to cut the sheet metal to size. We had to make sure to cut our lines nice and straight and trim off any excess that was unnecessary based upon where the sheet metal needed to overlap. So in order to raise this giant piece of metal up into place, we required the use of some heavy duty straps, which we strapped over the entire length of the bus. And then we would pull into place by ratcheting it. Later, we would add some wood blocks. I say we because unfortunately for me, this was way too big a job for me to do on my own. And I ended up requiring the assistance of a bunch of people. Uh, luckily for me, I was at Awesome Possum and they were able to help me out. It was a great community of people over here. Boy, was that a lot of riveting. Here's what it looks like from the inside, on the back, and here's a close-up shot of what it looks like to pull a rivet. We did probably close to 1,500 rivets on this bus. As you can see here, I'm holding a pneumatic riveting gun, which uses compressed air to pull the rivets. As I pull the trigger, it will actually pull the rivets for me, and I've been riveting all over the side of the bus here, as you can see. Are the uh, dark things, right? Yeah, or and the, the silver, silver things. things. Yeah, so the reason the other ones are real dark is that I was putting NP1, which is a sealant. I was putting it both inside the hole and then I was rubbing it on top. And then I was advised that it might not paint uh, very well. So I decided to stop doing that and then... Uh, yeah, you were just trying to be extra Yeah, secure. I was just trying to make it really sealed up. But if it turns out that it's hard to paint over it, then I'll have to grind all that stuff off anyway. Mm -hmm. So I figured better I'll just, just make kind of like a little NP1 washer. <laughs> underneath of it and so that's what i'm doing here um so i'm going to pull some rivets and show you guys how this works cool this little thing on the back is just a water bottle that i attached to the uh, the little exit so that i can drop the uh, rivet nail out once i'm done with it i'm just kind of bearing my weight and, pull it. and just like that it's riveted and this is actually going through two pieces of sheet metal so i'm, I'm pushing it a little bit harder and i'm also trying to do it in a certain pattern 
in order to um so the sheet metal overlap each other or yeah, they right? should uh, in this particular spot it should yeah and it should overlap on the outside because the wind is going to blow this way right so as the wind blows this way we want to make sure that it doesn't have any possibility of getting up under the the uh, piece of metal i'm kind of trying to go like this way and out in order to uh stop the metal from buckling or doing any kind of weird wrinkles it's actually really heavy metal 16 gauge how does the metal usually buckle on buses so what happens is that if you so for example let's say i just threw up a bunch of metal and then just started riveting randomly and i didn't do it in a pattern then i would create islands and hills in the metal and at first it wouldn't be that noticeable but as i started doing more and more tension pieces everywhere i would start to get very noticeable bubbles everywhere so I started first at the top, did all the top, then I'm doing kind of the middle and then outward, like diagonally, like a triangle, mm. uh, in order to kind of spread the chevron, load. Chevron, it's called. Is that what that's called? Yeah. A chevron. Uh, and spreading it out like that in order to uh, kind of dissipate the tension in the metal away. Push it all the way in, all the way in? Yeah. Squeeze. All right, good job. Okay, okay. Oh, you want to do more? more? Push, 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 push. Good job. Okay, you're lean it back so that the nail falls on it. Okay. Push, dig in real hard. Okay, one more. My left arm, this is my COVID <laughs> vaccine. Oh, she just got vaccinated today. <laughs> oh, good job. Oh, my arm. Right, now show off, show off your vaccine. Oh. Show off the band aid, come on. Okay, okay. Yeah, see, she just got vaccinated today. I can today. do it. And Here's a look at the progress of one side of the bus with all of the rivets in, nice and flat and no buckling, any issues like that. Here's a little bit of what it looks like on the inside at this point. And this took us a couple days to get this done. I wanna take a little time to talk about uh, drilling. So once the sheet metal is sandwiched in place, we have to go through and drill all of the holes in order for the rivets to live in. And we did this with using the original pilot holes from the original rivets, which were pulled. And here I'm using a cobalt bit, which was fantastic. With a very high-powered drill, it made pretty short work of it. And I was able to drill some 500 holes pretty effortlessly. Cool, huh?